Welcome to Creative Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine. I apologize for my voice. I am still a little bit under the weather, but I wanted to put together this video to show you my quilt inspired star shape video using up some scraps from our high end dupe, the always and forever sign using the R moments papers. And we're gonna turn it into a quilted inspired star uh, two page scrapbook layout. I've pulled out two sheets of our light blue card stock and this is one of my scraps from that sign or from my um, our moments sketch with me. Either way, I had a lot of scraps using the our moments collection and I really wanted to challenge myself to use some of these in projects and with the way these banners were we had a lot of these long triangles and I just thought it just really reminded me of a quilted star and I thought why not let's go for it so we're going to start out by cutting a four inch strip here and then we're going to turn it 90 degrees and we're going to cut four three inch sections off of this because our stars are going to be in the four corners of our layout so you're going to cut three inches four times three times i guess to get four four by three rectangles to anchor our quilted star pieces on. Here we go. I have this other random scrap and we're going to go ahead and cut it down to four inches. And now an inch and a half twice. So there's one and here's an inch and a half. Actually, I'm going to go this other direction because I don't want to get my fingers caught on the thing when it comes down here. So I've got it at inch and a half on my right side there, which is nice on our trimmer. We can measure on either side of our cutting strip, especially for the smaller measurements. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my rectangle on a diagonal on my cutting mat here and I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm creating essentially a larger triangle, kind of like what we had come off of our banner strips before. But this one is going to be just a little bit larger because we need a little something to anchor our flowers. Oops, here we go. And so this is what we're doing. And that should be it with your trimmers. So go ahead and set that aside. We're gonna start putting these together. I'm gonna grab one of my, so we should have two going this way and two going this way. Cause we're gonna have, let's see here. Essentially, uh, this is gonna have to turn because we have four corners and one of our corners is obviously our upper left. We have a lower right of our layout. And then we have a upper right. So we need to actually anchor the, we're actually gonna have to flip these, which is fine too. This is why we have double-sided paper. So we can use both sides of our paper. Yeah, because this just isn't going to work. So let's go ahead and flip them. And that is perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and grab our, I'm going to grab my parchment board. If you haven't seen my parchment board before, it's a sturdy piece of cardboard and I've used electrical tape to adhere my parchment to my board. Electrical tape is one of the few things that will stick to parchment. And when using your repositionable tape runner, it's really nice because the little dots that hit the parchment will stay in the tape runner and you don't have to worry about running off the paper at all. 
So let's go ahead and get our piece anchored. We will be placing our other ones kind of underneath. So that way we're going to be high up. Okay, so this is top left. Let's see which one is my bottom right here. I've got my pieces. I've, I've grabbed five of our little scraps left over from our project. And essentially these are going to tuck under. So I'm thinking that, well... You know what, let's, let me lift this up. This is why we're using repositionable tape, but it's good to have an idea of where, how high up this is gonna go, because when we place these, we want them to be up, but not off of our paper. So these are gonna come down a little bit. So this one, pretty much, we want them all at their angles. So I didn't say it wasn't gonna be a little tricky. We'll, we'll get it. So let me go ahead and flip all these over. I'm gonna put some repositionable tape on all of them. And like I said, it's gonna work out. Stick an extra piece on that one. And here we go. And basically I just grabbed out 20 of these little rectangles. And so we've got this one here that's going to be covering most of this, but we want to be able to see this one coming out from it. So let's start this one here. And then we'll just angle these other ones out from here and hope this works out for me. You can see I'm kind of trying to get my corners along the same lines, the same angle here. Yep, these are all going to be covered, so I feel pretty good about that. And they're all still on the square, which is going to help us with our placement on our actual page. It looks like this one was just a tiny bit bigger than the others, which, you know, sometimes when we were cutting all those angles, it wasn't perfect. Okay, let me make sure I got this end again and this bottom edge and there we go. Lesson learned, do the large piece last. So there we go. There is our first part of our quilted flower. And we'll go move on to this next one then. So let's see here. We know we need to place our um, let's see here. Which one is this one? This one. I did four stacks of five before I started the video here. So that way my colors would complement each other nicely as I fanned out the floral pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and start putting the tape on them. for where this one needs to go at least now this time I knew not to put my tape on so here's this one and going up from here this one needs to go up just a little bit more and you can see where I kind of did try to put it so my colors were complementary as they went along that things looked nice together and that it flowed well make sure this one doesn't go off of my so i just need to pull that last one in a bit more again there we go and now our large rectangle for this corner here we go Number two is done. So we got our two corners here. Let's keep going. This one is this bottom one going this direction. So you definitely want to make sure you have all your, your angles 
going the same direction of for your pieces. That is one thing again that I did check before I started the video. So that way I wouldn't have to edit it out and you wouldn't have to sit here and watch me do that. Oops. Let's see if I can actually keep these in order somewhat. Okay. Sometimes it cooperates more than other times. Okay. So coming from this end, let's start down here. I'm definitely getting a feel for, now that we've done it a couple of times, where to place them. It almost looks like a one of those tropical flowers that are a little bit pointier. Again, bring that one down and in a little bit. And here we go, side three is now done. And our final side here, four. Okay, there we go. Feels like my tape runner's wanting to run out on me. I think I am getting low, but that's okay. Let's see if we can actually get this done. Oops, did I already have that one flipped? Maybe. All right, well, we'll see how this works out for me. I guess if I want to, I could rub off the... I think these two will go together, that's fine. All right. So let's start this one in here. Coming down and in. Ah, nope, that one did flip. Okay, let me go ahead and, because see, this is what I'm talking about with the, um, the angle. You do want your right angle to be at this bottom corner coming up. And I put the tape on the wrong side of this paper. So I'm just rubbing it off. The repositionable tape rubs off easily. And there we go. No problem at all. Just I rubbed it off real quick. And there works out. There we go. And here's our final one. Oh, that one needs to come in a lot more. I think we wound up with a, a little bit of a longer one again. Here we go. All right. And now let's layer this in here. Okay. So there is our star is done. And what I'm planning on doing is putting them in the four corners of my layout. But if you want to actually just take and make it into a quilted star, if you will, you can just get your four pieces together. And you can see, although it's kind of, since we put it on these rectangles instead of actual squares like you would with quilting it, it's not quite a full star. It's almost more like it looks like it's stretched out a little bit. But we are going to place it on our page here. And I was planning on doing this. So this way we have our pieces. Okay. Hang on. Let me move my parchment board aside. This is not in the right corner. Let me open up my two pages here and 
Let's do this. We're going to line these up in the corners so that way the long way is coming out. And here we go. So then this way, this is highlighting the corners of this layout. You could make it as a single page layout, but I think it would clutter up the page a little bit too much because you want to have space for your pictures. And I just think that this is going to be a nice way you can put your pictures here. You can actually add another accent piece here. I mean, if you had photos of quilting, if you're a quilter, that would actually be gorgeous. Or you could even do another star in the center. And instead of doing the uh, three by four inch base that we did, you could do a four by four and have it come out from the middle here as well and use up even more of your scraps that way. But this is kind of what I was thinking and my mind would look nice. You would have space for your photos. You can add some other embellishments or stickers from our, our moments collection. You can add some mats, however you want to do it. So you can see it on the camera a little bit better. And I'm happy with how it came out as a two page layout with the floral pieces in the corners. Until next time.